Traitor child. I must despise you now. Out of the way, Peck. Matt Mardigan, you can't drive that way with a baby. You are great. <laughs> a fiery horse with the speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a hearty high silver. The Lone Ranger. You're listening to That Gets My Goat. Yeah, I don't know. It's funny. I guess we could start out this uh, episode of That Gets My Goat with me getting my goat about Willow. It's funny. We were just listening to the line. Thanks yes, time. yes, that one. And yeah, it made me think about Willow and just the last time I saw it, how frustratingly annoying the character of Willow was. He was supposed to be... I don't know what he was supposed to be. I guess he learned to not be a douche or something by the course of the movie because near the end he was... No, he was just that way the whole way. He just yells at Mad Mardigan the whole time. Yeah, you gotta... You can't save this baby's life in a dangerous way, Mad Mardigan. You've got to save it in a safe and sane way. I don't know. It's fairly annoying. I mean, it's one thing to do that once or twice, but the 10th, 20th time, you just want Willow to shut up. But, you know, that's not what we're here for. We're here to complain about a different movie. Oh, I see, because I have no strong feelings about Willow, I'm willing to just sit back and let you rail against it, if you'd like. Yeah. The other problem with that movie is the baby is prophesied to bring about the the fall of Ba- b- b- what's her name? Ba- 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 what was her name? Bavmarda or something like that, you said? Bavmorda, that's oh. it. And yeah, the baby doesn't do anything. The baby's just there, and everybody else uh, brings about the fall of Bavmorda by taking the baby places. Well, like, maybe it was intended to be the first movie in a series. I don't know. I don't think so. Oh. It ends, and Bavmorda's done and gone and over with, but... Uh, it's like, uh, I don't know, having, uh, you know, Frodo push a, a stroller all the way to Mordor and then throw the ring in. And then they say that the baby that was in the stroller is the one that took down Sauron. You know, it's just, I don't know. Mm. It doesn't quite work out. But, you know, they were trying to get the baby the whole time. So it was all the baby's fault. Those orcs were trying to kill the baby and not Frodo. I want to hear more about Sam. Frodo wouldn't have gotten far without him. Okay. So yeah, this is Big Anklevich. And this is Rich Outfield. And this is That Gets My Goat. And it's very, very, very late. It is a little late. We're kind of a little tired. Hopefully we're not too unpeppy. That's probably not a word. Uh, hopefully we're not too unable to come up with the right word. Bavmorda. Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. Am I late on that? A <laughs> little bit, a little bit. So, uh, yeah, we're doing uh, Gets My Goat. This is our first uh, Gets My Goat since our big summer movie festival. Actually, it isn't. Actually, it isn't. We had a secret episode that three people downloaded. Oh. I hope you all die. <laughs> That's true. We did get our goat on that secret episode that nobody... Uh, I, I think it's hiding in plain sight that just makes people completely miss it. Mm, I thought I was being clever, and I clevered myself out of a bunch of downloads. <laughs> Not that many downloads. You clevered yourself out of like 20. Ah, okay. <laughs> I don't know why I bother to continue. That gets my goat. <laughs> Instead of 25 downloads, there was five. <laughs> <laughs> oh, play the sad music, would you? Do, 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 do. That song is called like Sad Man or something like that, isn't it? Yeah, uh, it's the Ballad of a Lonely Man, I think. Yeah, something like that, yeah. It's, or maybe just The Lonely Man, I think it was. The Lonely be Man, yeah, okay. Good stuff. Very fitting. So, um, you were telling me about uh, this Dill. That was going on with his movie. I hate people that say deal is dill. I hate that. <laughs> I, uh, there's no excuse for that. Just, yeah, most people probably have never heard somebody say that. That's kind of a, a local thing. Most people have better lives than me. Yes, they do. That is definitely true. Um, so, yeah. yeah. Over the summer, over the last few weeks, I've been updating you every time we get together on, on this situation. Uh, do, do you want to set the stage or... Can I just go to sleep? <laughs> Why don't you set the stage rather than going to sleep? 
Well, we complained in our Green Lantern episode about how much money that movie cost and I just, it, all the unnecessary expense of the CG mask and CG costume and CG characters. And, I mean, the stuff that didn't need to be special effects that were special effects and the stuff that didn't need to cost a fortune that did cost a fortune. I think in that episode I was talking about how Universal shut down uh, at the Mountains of Madness, that Guillermo del Toro, James Cameron picture, because they just it was a $200 million R-rated horror film based on H.P. Lovecraft, who Drabble cast notwithstanding, nobody likes. And, you know, how for once I was able to get on the side of the studios and the pencil pushers. And I thought that they had a point for once in their lives. And then later at the end of the summer, we had a, another experience like that. And this time it was Disney. Okay. Disney shut down pre-production on The Lone Ranger. Wait, hold on. That was a cowboy movie, right? That's a Western, right? I think it was a radio sh- show originally, and then it was in the 50s, a, a television series, yeah. And so it's it's just about a guy who rides a horse around it's and f- saves settlers. It's about a, a masked hero in the Old West with an Indian... Uh, now, what was the Canadian uh, political first, the first nation sidekick? A sidekick named Tonto, and they they go from place to place, righting wrongs and taking down bad guys. But he can't show his face because you know he's been implicated, Co- convicted in a crime of a crime he didn't, didn't commit. commit. Exactly, <laughs> created by the same guy who created the Green Hornet, and the Green Hornet is like the descendant of the Lone Ranger. This it was very I'm successful in its day. This is the one I'm thinking of. Then this is a western. How, how can a western cost too much? How is that possible? Well, I guess the last thing I read was Gore Verbinski, the director of the Pirates of the Caribbean trilogy, and Johnny Depp were going to do this project together. Depp would play okay, Tonto, Depp. and the budget Depp for, costs money. That's true. Okay. Sorry, go on. The budget for The Lone Ranger, $260 million. <laughs> and Disney said, that's too much money. We, we won't do it for any more than $210 million. And Verbinski said, we might be able to get it down to 240 But anything lower than that, and I walk. <sighs> and Johnny Depp put his hat in, in the ring and said, if Verbinski walks, I too am going to walk. And so there was sort of a stalemate on there, and that I've just been updating you on that. And every time somebody released a story about it, that budget got higher. Until finally, like Nikki Fink or something over at Deadline Hollywood said, it's two hundred and sixty million dollars was the deal, is what Verbinski said that it, it would cost to make this movie, and and it has three train derailments or train explosions or destructions of trains (laughs) and it has werewolves and that's why it's going to cost a Terminator 2 plus a Titanic. My goodness. Okay. This is not the Lone Ranger then. The Lone Ranger didn't fight werewolves. And they're... I guess possibly could have been a train derailment in a lone range, but you could get a real train and crash it for less than a third of that budget. You could just go and buy an actual train. Um, well, I maybe think you, you could. could. I don't know. Create a time machine, go back to the Wild West, and crash one of those trains for less than two hundred and sixty million dollars. But you know, I don't know how. In today's dollars. I think what it is is that they're actually going to shoot the Lone Ranger on a green screen, naked. And they're going to give him a CG Western shirt and bolo tie, <laughs> CG mask and CG cowboy hat. CG horse. So that every shot, yes, that's it. It's cruelty to animals. That's the thing. It's like, it's like Planet of the Apes. They're trying to avoid cruelty to animals, so they're not going to have actual horses in it. They're going to use CG horses. That's, oh my gosh, it's insane. <laughs> Uh, that maybe, seems listen, like, listen, maybe they were going to use CG to turn Johnny Depp into a Native American. <laughs> yeah, there you go. They were just going to completely do a, a jar jar of him. It's not even Johnny Depp. doesn't even look like him, but it just has his voice. They were just going to put Rango in in place of Johnny Depp in every shot. 
I don't know. That's that's just the most insane thing I've ever heard. I mean, the Lone Ranger. Actually, that actually sounds kind of interesting to me. I'd actually like to see a new version of the Lone Ranger show. When I was a kid, it's not like I. I don't know if I ever actually saw a Lone Ranger anything, but everybody knew you hear the William Tell Overture, and that was the Lone Ranger theme song. That wasn't the William Tell Overture. Right. I didn't know that that was what it was called until I was like 15 or something. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, it would be cool to see the Lone Ranger ride again, but it's the Lone Ranger. It's not... Is it cowboys and aliens, or is it the Lone Ranger? The Lone Ranger is what? He's fighting friggin' werewolves? There's got to be an alien spaceship or two probably involved in that. I mean, maybe it's like Battleship. <laughs> There's alien monsters that ride on alien monster horses. I, I haven't seen the projections for Battleship, but I can guarantee you whatever that movie cost it will was not way back. more than a <laughs> Battleship movie should have cost. I, we had that conversation when we saw the trailer. I, it was at the beginning of Harry Potter or something that uh-huh. we saw together. And a fudgin transformer, a Michael Bay transformer comes out of the water. And I was just like, what the crap is this? Because at first I assumed, because you saw, you know, a battleship, that that's what this was. And then I saw Autobots. And I was like, oh my gosh, what? And then at the end it said battleship. But it it was ludicrous. There was chuckles in the audience because (laughs) people were putting two two together. People that didn't know there was a battleship movie coming. It was like one of the phony trailers at the beginning of Tropic Thunder. A lot of times I feel like the studios are the bad guys and they're standing in the way of art being created or standing in the way of the movies that I want to see and, and I'm coming down more and more on their side when I see stuff like this. And, and you know what? Somewhere out there, Rise of the Planet of the Apes is still making money. But just I got a rail against that. The, the money that was spent on CG apes that look like CG apes that took me out of the story every second they were on the screen... And and you know what? Other people may not have a problem with that. Other people may love the plane crash in Air Force One. But a bad <laughs> special effect can ruin a movie for Why you. do you ruin? I don't understand. I mean, the Lone Ranger seems like a, the, uh, an obvious, you know, uh, it's, a, it's a franchise. It's something that you can jump on that people recognize even now. You know, I mean, folks like me and you remember the Lone Ranger and I would say in a fond way I don't know if you feel that way or if I'm just up in the night but it's a franchise that you can jump on that people still remember in a good way I would think and you could do it so cheap yeah you, you could, could pull in a 30 million dollar Lone Ranger movie and it would still have spectacle and it could still have people that you recognize the names of and it could still pack people into seats I think the True Grit that came out last Christmas cost around 30 Yeah, I was just going to mention that. True Grit should have proved something to them. True Grit made so much money, dude. Yeah, it was rolling in money, especially because it didn't cost money. It cost little and made much. And I bet the Lone Ranger could probably make more because it's already got the name recognition. True Grit was, it didn't, you know? Uh, All it had was the strength of its script to stand on, which is a good thing to have. And hopefully the Lone Ranger movie could also have that. But man, it just amazes me that, you know, it's not like Green Hornet, for example, that you mentioned earlier, where not that many people really remember it. You know, there's some things that they try and dig out like they did that one movie, the uh, I think it's called The Avengers, isn't that what that was called? It was like from a TV show from the 60s, had Emma, or not Emma, what was her name? That oh, one. it had uh, Emma Peel, I guess was the character's name. It, it had Uma Thurman. Yeah, and Uma Thurman. Ray Fiennes. It, it, and, and those and folks Sean Connery. playing those characters, but you know, people didn't remember it, so they didn't flock to it. Oh, it but nothing. that movie was a gigantic, undulating turd. Well, there's that too. But you know, it, that's a franchise they tried to dig up. And resurrect, but it had no legs, you know, to to stand on. Every year you'll see something like Marmaduke or the Mod Squad or fill in the blank, Starsky and Hutch or something like that, where it's like, okay, we're going to make a a hit movie out of something that was a footnote. 
Right, that's what I'm saying. And the Lone Ranger is not in any way a footnote. I mean, you can talk about the Gene Autry and the singing cowboy and all. I mean, the Lone Ranger's probably got to be, I would say, the number one best-known cowboy ever. You think there's somebody else that that could trump the Lone Ranger as the... Uh... A fictional character? Probably not, no. Yeah. It seems like they're just absolutely missing the boat on this. And I think what they're supposedly going for... And I think you you already said this to me before when we weren't on air, so now we'll repeat it. Uh, I guess they're going for the whole Pirates of the Caribbean. They're trying to catch that lightning in the bottle again, just like other people have tried with the Prince of Persia or the, what was the other one? Sorcerer's Apprentice. Ah, right, the Sorcerer's Apprentice. You know, they're trying to catch that same lightning in the bottle again that they got with Pirates of the Caribbean, where, oh, you know, it was ghost pirates. So people obviously want to see some kind of supernatural thing werewolves and three tra- three train wrecks and and you know i don't know if, if i had read that script maybe i would say oh my gosh i'm so wrong but movies cost so much more than they need to and and despite lone ranger being the most famous cowboy that we can think of does it have to be the tent pole picture? Does every movie have to be a huge summer blockbuster? Something that we learned this summer is movies like The Help or Bridesmaids, those are going to make careers for the rest of the lives of the people that made these movies. Yeah, or True Grit. I don't, I don't understand why studios don't see those and say, hey, do we have anything like that? Uh, paranormal activity. Do we have anything that doesn't cost very much? but that is really, really scary. Instead, they're like, let's rip off Paranormal Activity. Let's do a found footage movie just like that. Or what do we have that's exactly that? Let's make a movie (laughs) that's that. Or what do we have that we can turn into that? Like we have the Lone Ranger. Let's have there be caves with ghost pirates there. Yeah, it's it's unbelievable. And it makes me really sad because... When you first started mentioning the Lone Ranger to me, I thought, you know, I hadn't thought about the Lone Ranger in years, but that's actually an interesting, especially after having gone to see True Grit and having enjoyed that a lot. I thought, gosh, the Lone Ranger would be really cool. I remember you wrote a story once that you shared with me and then uh, probably regretted it because I keep bringing it up to you here and there and you always uh, assume that I'm mocking you, but you wrote a story that's basically a Lone Ranger-ish type story where the, there's a kid who becomes the uh, apprentice of a Lone Ranger the type side guy. Team. Right. And uh, yeah, just that, the, the Lone Ranger tie-in on that was enough to make me like, oh, yeah, I'll check this story. Oh, oh that's interesting. Oh, yeah, I'll try this story and read it and, and enjoy it all the way through, even though it sucked. Um, <laughs> <laughs> no, seriously, it was, it was actually a well-done, really interesting story. Yeah, I mean, I was sold. You had me at Lone Ranger. You know, it was, it was just that that's one of those things that I think that they could easily cash in on, and they could probably do dozens of these pictures. They could do a Lone Ranger movie every friggin' year, cast some Christopher Reeves type guy that could be the Lone Ranger. Well, right, and it, it was going to be make, and I can't really remember his name. He he was he played the twins in the Social Network, so a young, good-looking, square-jawed, American-looking guy who cost nothing. Yeah, and you could make ten, ten Lone Ranger movies for the price of one of this stupid idea that they've got, and. And make, you know, in that time, make at least as much, if not way more, than they could ever make with the one $360 million budget. I guess that actually makes <laughs> 12 True Grits you could make for the price of that. Just ridiculous. I don't know, man. I guess, you know, you want to be able to do what you want with your film. And these days, it almost seems like there are no barriers there's nothing that's keeping you from trying to show everything you want to show cuz studios are willing to just vomit money all over whatever it is that they think is going to hold up their studio over the summer i i, I know that that, that 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 you can do it but did you ever ask yourself if you should yeah it, that's the thing and we've talked about it before. It's kind of like the Blair Witch Project, which I know you rail about because there was nothing out there. But how much did they scare people just saying, oh, my gosh, I think there's something out there. Oh, my God, there's something. How much more effect can you get by not showing something than you can get by showing it again and again and again? 
it seems to be a lost art. It's like nobody knows how to just build suspense anymore. They just they show the monster and have it attack you again and again. It upsets me every time you bring up this conversation. <laughs> oh, well, and I, I'm sorry, but it gets my goat. Oh, it's, that's perfect. what this show is for. And you know, there are things that upset you. And we talked about 260 million dollars, and that's something that a person like you and me can't even imagine how much money that is. It's like you could build a skyscraper, I think, uh, yeah. for $260 million. Could, I think you really could. I, you I, could build a fairly I, tall building. I don't know how high. If it would actually scrape the sky or just nudge it a little. My guess is you could put shoes on every human being on the face of the earth. <laughs> you know what I mean? Or you could buy a meal for every starving child for the rest of their lives for two hundred and sixty million dollars. According to those uh, commercials, like you can feed a kid in Africa for like thirty cents a, a month or something like that. I don't know how that works out. Yeah, those commercials bother me, but not nearly as much as the Sarah McLaughlin suffering dog commercials. Hmm. <laughs> What's the I don't song? Know if I've it's like seen the heart of the angel, oh. and you hear. Oh, no. A non-CG dog looks at the camera, and uh, anyhow. Yeah, that just, is disturbing. I don't know why movies have to cost as much as they do. And my friend Jeff always argues with me when I bring this up because he's like, yeah, the studios are so friggin' corrupt. Ten years later, they still haven't made a dime on... Titanic? I don't know. You know, Passion of the Christ still hasn't broken even and you know stuff like that with their creative accounting and and you know the the millions and millions of dollars that they paid peter jackson to shut him up about the lord of the rings because they knew that if that went to court and their books were opened that everyone in the world would find out how dishonest they were and stuff like that but yeah okay the problem starts at the top i guess but I, I don't know why things have to cost so much. And I regret that we live in a day when everything is so easy and you don't have to compromise or you don't have to be creative anymore. There's this film, didn't make a dime in the U.S., but it's called Attack the Block. And it was a British sci-fi horror film. And it came out there and made some money. Uh, Joe Cornish made it. And it was produced by Edgar Wright, who is the Shaun of the Dead hot fuzz guy. Okay. And it was a really low budget sci-fi horror movie. And because they couldn't do CG aliens, they had to do it, you know, low tech kind of thing. And they came up with the most brilliant, clever way of turning a man in a suit into something where you'd never for a second believe that was a man in a suit. It was something like, what is that? How could that, you know, that thing is alive and, and people interact with the creatures and they're there in the room attacking people and all that. And you actually see the movement and the touching and, and interaction. And the but, running and the, and the, and running the screaming. And, the screaming. and it was just like rotoscoping an old, old technology of a guy in a suit and if you've seen that movie, if anybody wants to see a, a, what you can do with no money, there's a one scene where the creatures are running in slow motion after the human beings. And in slow motion, just like, what am I looking at? Basically, they just matted out the top half of these people that were in the suits. So, you know, it's like they're running and they're obviously there, but nothing could be shaped like that, you know? It's just really, really clever stuff. And it's like, where is that? Where are people that are like, okay, well, how can we come up with this in a creative way? How can we do this? Instead, it's just like throw money at it. Let's, yeah, let's triple those... the budget. Let's have the computer guys do it. You, you want to know where those people are that know that stuff? They're uh, in the cemetery now in Hollywood, unfortunately. <laughs> they've all been drummed out of the business and they've all died. The knowledge is gone. It's over. Shut down shop. And, you know, that's, later, that's the case. The, gone is the day when you look at something and say, how did they do that? Yeah. Because the answer is always the computer. Right. And even if you don't know how the computer effect works, that's the answer. That's everything. I don't know what we can do about that. But so often, all it would take is wires, or all it would take is shoot it again with the guy walking backwards, or, or, or makeup, or whatever it is. And they don't do that because it's so easy to just throw more money at it. You know, a, a movie like 
Scott Pilgrim versus the world. Or is that what it was called? Scott Pilgrim saves the world. Scott Pilgrim. Scott Pilgrim dot 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 <laughs> lost a ton of money for its studio. But somebody somewhere should have looked at that way before they spent that money and said, you know, this has a very narrow audience. This is not going to be a tentpole film. We don't want to spend a hundred million dollars on this thing. But people don't do that. And so, you know, it's like that ruined the chances of the filmmakers behind that movie to do movies in the future. And, you know, like Edgar Wright was going to do Ant-Man. And that's not happened, I think, because Scott Pilgrim lost so much money. You know, these people, they're on a, a runway. They're on a path. And uh, Zack Snyder, you know, he makes the Dawn of the Dead remake for nothing, and it makes a lot of money. He makes 300, and it makes a lot of money. He makes Watchmen, which shouldn't have made a dime, and it made a lot of money. It's like, wow, Zack Snyder is king of the world. He makes Sucker Punch, which costs a lot of money, didn't make any money. And now it's like, okay, well, you can be Christopher Nolan's bitch, but we're not going to let you make a movie yourself again. It's like all it takes is, is, is that. But, but somebody somewhere should have said, oh, my gosh. $80 million for this movie that is only going to appeal to people that like anime or fetishize Japanese schoolgirl outfits and stuff. And it just... Wait, wait, wait. What is this show called? Again? What they should have done is said, okay, you know, we'll let you make that for $30 million. But like all of the statues that come to life and, you know, stuff like that will be guys in suits. And, yeah. and, and you know, I'm biased because I wanted... Because I'm a failed filmmaker, you know? Mm-hmm. And if somebody came to me and said, you know, we can get three times the money that you've asked for if you change sheriff to Marshall to war. <laughs> no, if you change <laughs> sheriff to werewolf in the script, I, I don't know. Maybe it's, Marshall it's, has eight letters, though, and sheriff only has seven. OK, so Marshall <laughs> must be more important. <laughs> I, I see what you're saying. Maybe I mean, the good thing is maybe this is a step in, in the right direction. I mean, Disney turned them down. So two hundred sixty million for Lone Ranger? Uh, nah, that's probably only going to make fifty million back. So I'm, I'm sure it was a pretty dang wise decision, and maybe it's a turning point. Maybe people will start being creative again instead of just throwing money at things. I don't know. I mean, uh, hopefully it's a, a step in the right direction. I hope that someday they do a regular Lone Ranger movie. I'd like to see it. Um, there's enough Western stories out there. It's not like we haven't had any Western movies in the past if they want to just borrow and pick and steal from a bunch of them. There's a lot of stories out there that have been done before that the Lone Ranger could find his way into. Or they could make a, try and make up a wholly original one, if that's even possible in that genre any further. Yeah, I'd, I'd love to see it. Well, see, a studio head needs to say, what Western scripts do we have? And le hey, let me take a look at that. All right, hey, let's green light this Western because, you know, maybe the time has come for people to make that. Instead of saying, okay, we've got this, but let, let's see what we can do to make it like every other movie. Mm -hmm. You know, because it's got to hit the four quadrants. That's something that the executives always say, which is like young boys, young girls, adult men, adult women kind of thing. You know, it has to appeal to everybody so you can get your $200 million or $150 million or whatever a blockbuster is nowadays. But not all movies have to be blockbusters. Not all movies have to be for everybody. Just make the best movie you can out of whatever story you're trying to tell instead of trying to have a love interest so that the women will go to it and have a kid in it so that the kids will want to see it and have kung fu so that my cousin will see it. You know, <laughs> I, everything has to be universal because they want to spend so much money and make all this money back. There's something to be said for keeping your expectations lower, your budgets lower or whatever, just so that there's a possibility of achieving your goals. And, and if a movie is good, then people will see it, even if... You know, it takes a, a year for you to make your money back. I, I don't know. That's something we talked about with Shawshank Redemption or something in an earlier right. episode. Concentrate on making a good movie before you say, okay, you know, one out of ten people on the earth has to see it for it to make its budget. <laughs> right. All right. Well, I think uh, we've we've probably used our time up. Your wife is already up and getting ready to, yeah, she's, to work, she's to sleep, I almost said. Yeah, what you wish. <laughs> it's me hoping to get some sleep before the uh, I have to go to work. All right, well, 
thanks for listening, folks. Uh, we'll see you next time. I'm Big Anglovich. And I'm Rich Good night. Ciao. Ad Gets My Coat is produced under a Creative Commons attribution, non-commercial, no derivatives license. But it really shouldn't be.